2,000 years ago, Marcus Aurelius was the most powerful man on Earth. He ruled an empire that covered tens of millions of square miles and had control over tens of millions of people. He led the strongest army in the world and had the power to decide life and death. Despite having such immense power, Marcus could have chosen a life of luxury and laziness, or he could have been driven mad by the stress and demands of his role. However, as one biographer noted, he proved himself worthy of his great responsibility and power. Impressively, he wasn't corrupted by his power or overwhelmed by its stress. Instead, he managed it all admirably. What was his secret? What did his daily life look like? How did Marcus Aurelius handle his duties? Thanks to his writings in Meditations, his personal reflections, we have some insight. Today I want to talk about the daily routine of Marcus Aurelius, the Philosopher King. Like many of us, Marcus Aurelius started his day with a struggle against the comfort of his bed. He wasn't inherently a morning person, but he trained himself to rise early, as documented in his meditations. He often grappled with the temptation to stay under the warm covers, asking himself, I have to go to work as a human being. Was I created to huddle under the blankets and stay warm? It's nice here, but is that my purpose? This daily battle highlights the universal challenge of overcoming inertia to embrace the day's tasks. By instilling the habit of early rising, Marcus exemplified the discipline that many successful individuals strive to emulate. To make the process easier, Marcus might have employed techniques that are recommended even today, such as placing his alarm clock away from the bed, ensuring a reason to get up and out of bed immediately. This small act of self-discipline set the tone for the rest of his day. He started his day with a deliberate choice to do what's difficult but essential. In the early hours, Marcus likely engaged in meditation, philosophical study, writing and journaling, all before dealing with the demands of his role, inquiries, favors, bad news, travel or battles. This was his time for stillness and reflection in contrast to many of us who check our phones or to-do lists the moment we wake up. Instead of cultivating a stoic state of ataraxia or freedom from disturbance, we end up tackling problems right away. Marcus Aurelius used his mornings to be meditative, philosophical and intentional. In Book 2 of Meditations, he talks about preparing for the day by telling himself, the people I deal with today will be meddling, ungrateful, arrogant, dishonest, jealous, and surly. This wasn't about expecting a bad day, but about anticipating the types of people he would encounter. He thought about how to be patient and understanding, and how to manage these interactions. Seneca, another Stoic, also emphasized this idea. The unexpected blow lands heaviest. If you expect everyone to be wonderful, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Marcus practiced pre-meditation, considering why people act the way they do and what his role is in dealing with them. He advised not to lose temper, not to write people off, but to find the good in them. Confronted with the myriad responsibilities of his position, Marcus understood the importance of promptness and efficiency. He drew inspiration from his stepfather Antoninus, who exemplified meticulous planning and discipline, even scheduling bathroom breaks to maximize productivity. Emulating this, Marcus approached his duties with full presence and dedication, without allowing room for complaint, even internally. His day was filled with high-stakes tasks, making decisions, adjudicating cases, addressing the public, traveling and occasionally leading troops into battle, all requiring unwavering focus. To manage such a demanding schedule, Marcus likely utilized techniques akin to modern time management strategies, such as prioritizing tasks and delegating responsibilities where appropriate. 
His ability to remain composed under pressure can serve as a powerful lesson in effective leadership and personal discipline. Marcus advised winnowing your thoughts, always being ready to answer what you're thinking about, encouraging deep work and focus on the task at hand. Despite many distractions and potential tasks, he believed in locking onto the current task. His routine involved meetings with advisors, ministers and ambassadors, strategy briefings, and listening to experts. Marcus learned to yield the floor to experts, listen to opinions, and accept feedback and criticism graciously, understanding that correcting an error is a favor, not a harm. His job was stressful and exhausting, but he approached it with the right mindset and kept it contained. Achieving balance in life is essential, as overworking can lead to burnout and a loss of perspective. Marcus Aurelius, in his meditations, warned against being entirely consumed by business. He himself maintained a balanced lifestyle, incorporating physical activities such as boxing, wrestling, hunting and horseback riding into his routine. Marcus also found solace in nature, often taking reflective walks. His detailed observations, grain bending under its weight, foam on a boar's mouth or the brow of a lion, demonstrate his deep appreciation for the natural world, which he viewed as a spiritual sanctuary, a temple of the gods. In today's fast-paced world, taking time to engage with nature and physical exercise can provide significant mental health benefits. Like Marcus, we should strive to find moments of peace and reflection in our daily lives, whether through a walk in the park, a hobby, or simply a quiet moment of mindfulness. Unlike many Romans, Marcus did not relish the violence of the Colosseum. Often, he would use his time there to engage in philosophical work, read or contemplate, distancing himself mentally from the brutality around him. He sought peace and relaxation, emphasizing that one could find solace within, regardless of external circumstances. Even in the chaotic environment of the Colosseum, he would immerse himself in works by Aeschylus, Homer, Cleanthes, Zeno, or Epictetus, drawing strength from philosophy. Daily visits to the baths were likely a part of his routine, allowing him to wash away the figurative and literal dirt of life. The Romans valued the gymnasium and baths, combining physical exercise with relaxation. At Aquincum, a Roman camp outside Budapest, where Marcus likely wrote parts of meditations, one can still visit the hot springs he may have frequented. Despite his immense responsibilities, Marcus found time for relaxation and pleasure balancing the demands of his position. His reign was marked by numerous challenges, including historic floods, the devastating Antonine Plague, wars, invasions, coups, health issues, and family troubles. An ancient historian noted that Marcus didn't have the good fortune he deserved with his reign filled with continuous troubles. The stress was unimaginable, yet Marcus believed in his duty and developed coping mechanisms to manage it. His practices of journaling and stoicism helped him stay calm, centered and intentional, avoiding anger and destructive emotions. The stoic idea that obstacles are opportunities was evident in Marcus's approach to challenges. When betrayed by his trusted general Avidius Cassius, he did not react impulsively, but took time to think aiming to demonstrate to the Romans and future generations how to handle civil strife. He embodied the principle from meditations that the best revenge is not to be like those who wrong you. Marcus viewed every challenge, big or small, as an opportunity to respond with virtue and decency. Marcus was not all about business. When not engaged in physical activities, he immersed himself in reading and writing, which he considered essential to his role. His letters to his mentor Cornelius Fronto and philosophical discussions with his teacher Rusticus show his dedication to continual learning. Marcus read extensively, often quoting from memory the works of Aeschylus, Epictetus and Zeno. 
His writings reveal his diligent, focused approach to reading, always seeking to deepen his understanding and improve. This disciplined reading routine was likely an integral part of his evening, contributing to his growth as a philosopher and leader. Maintaining balance requires a deliberate evening routine. Seneca advocated for an end-of-day ritual of reviewing one's actions, and Marcus Aurelius practiced a similar form of self-reflection. In the quiet of the evening, as noted by his biographers, Marcus would reflect on his day's actions, questioning how he could improve and holding himself accountable for both successes and failures. This process, detailed in his meditations, was a cornerstone of his personal development. Without an immediate supervisor and with the judgment of history distant, Marcus relied on philosophy as his guide, constantly striving to align himself with its principles. Modern equivalents of this practice include journaling, meditation, or simply taking a few minutes before bed to reflect on the day's events. These practices can enhance self-awareness and foster a sense of accountability and continuous improvement. Just as Marcus balanced his immense responsibilities with personal reflection, we can integrate similar habits to ensure we remain grounded and focused on our personal growth. In the stillness of the evening, Marcus would engage in journaling, reading and contemplation. It's easy to imagine that not a day went by without him practicing the stoic exercise of memento mori, remembering that death could come at any moment. He wrote, Let that thought determine what you do and say and think. Valuing time with his family, he once mentioned to Fronto that he would trade all his power for more time with his wife. When tucking his children in at night, he reminded himself that they might not make it to the morning, not out of morbidity, but to cherish every moment and be fully present. This practice was an essential part of the Stoic routine, and it's likely that not a single day passed in Marcus's life without it. Throughout the day, Marcus was surrounded by adulation and reverence, receiving gifts from kings and salutes from soldiers, Yet he made a conscious effort to remind himself of his own insignificance. He warned himself against becoming Caesar-fied or overly enamored with power and prestige. He viewed the fancy feasts, honors and jewelry as mere symbols, reminding himself that they were just dead pigs, rocks from mines and silly metals. This was his way of staying humble amidst his surreal existence. Each of us should adopt a similar practice because success can easily lead to arrogance, making us feel like the center of the universe. Philosophy helps us gain perspective, seeing an army as ants from a distance rather than a powerful force up close. In Meditations, Marcus often reflected on whether he was afraid of death because he wouldn't be able to continue his activities. He valued time but criticized how frivolously we often spend it, acting as if we have an eternity when we don't. The Stoics believed that death is a continuous process, with every minute and day representing a form of dying. Marcus would reflect on each day's passage as a kind of death, asking himself what he had to show for his time. He tried to imagine going to bed without waking up, and if given a second chance the next day, how he would improve, grow, and not take time for granted. A day in the life of Marcus Aurelius at first glance might seem distant and unfamiliar, set 2,000 years ago amid ancient languages and immense power. However, his meditations and daily routines reveal a man facing challenges not unlike our own. Despite the historical gap, human nature remains a constant thread from Marcus, we can glean numerous valuable habits and practices to enhance our own lives. By studying Marcus's approach to life, his discipline, his balance of work and leisure, and his commitment to personal growth, we can find inspiration to navigate our own challenges. His life serves as a reminder that wisdom from the past can still guide us in the present, helping us to lead more intentional and fulfilled lives. After his evening reflections, Marcus would prepare for bed, 
While it's easy to discuss waking up early without ensuring adequate sleep and having a disciplined bedtime routine, it's challenging. Marcus likely struggled with insomnia due to the immense stress and health issues he faced, but he made an effort to rest and take care of himself. You must do the same. Balance hard work with sufficient rest to maintain overall well-being. Marcus Aurelius's life and routines, as documented in his meditations, provide timeless lessons on discipline, balance, and personal growth. By examining his daily practices, we can find inspiration to embrace our own challenges with a stoic mindset, focusing on self-discipline, mindfulness, and continuous improvement. Just as Marcus faced his day with intention and reflection, we too can strive to live more meaningful and balanced lives. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the life of Marcus Aurelius. If you found this exploration insightful and inspiring, please leave a comment, like this video, and subscribe to our channel for more content on timeless wisdom and practical philosophy. Your support helps us continue to share valuable lessons from history that can enrich our modern lives.